walk us through your understanding of how these agents work. Um, you know, you talked about, uh, we, we talk about vessel normalization, we talk about intratumoral pressures and those sorts of things. Give us your understanding of, of how, how, what the mechanism of action is for these anti-angiogenic drugs. Sure. So, um, and and thank you for saying that this is my opinion because I know exactly <laughs> how it works. <laughs> no, but um, I think that you mentioned some of them. I mean, Rakesh Jain's sort of theory on uh, vessel normalization and then uh, increasing the ability to deliver chemotherapy was very compelling. He had these very nice uh, mouse models looking at the sort of the tumor growth within the ear and sort mm -hmm. of showing how uh, the interstitial pressures um, are, are messed up in a tumor and then uh, with an anti-angiogenic therapy you kind of get normalization and some larger blood vessels that then allow for better blood flow and better delivery of um, potentially the chemotherapy. Um, or T-cells. Or the T-cells, yeah. exactly. Um, I think that that's uh, one mechanism. I think, um, you know, how, how it augments chemotherapy um, is probably that that's probably the most likely uh, way because there are mouse models for that as well, mm -hmm. uh, where you actually can show in uh, tissue biopsies that you have higher amounts of chemotherapy after anti after anti angiogenic therapy. Um, but I think that uh, you know the other mechanisms in terms of you know primarily blocking the neoangiogenesis um, is there's still lots to be learned right. about how that would work. Right. Yeah, I've always said sometimes our, our you know, uh, basic science uh, colleagues are, are very good at dissecting the pathway, understanding the way, and therapeutically sometimes it takes a while uh, to kind of target these sorts of things. We understood there are a number of ligands, uh, there are three known receptors, um, and the strategy we've taken clinically is either kind of the monoclonal antibody Correct. approach or the TKI approach. Right. I wonder if you could kind of walk us through these. Two, two different approaches. Sure, so well, as you alluded to, VEGF receptor is a transmembrane receptor, so it cross spans the cell wall and there is an outside portion, just like with there, oh, many other receptor tyrosine kinases, and the inside portion. So the monoclonal antibody or a form of different you know, uh, ways of trapping uh, the VEGF receptor, such as VEGF trap or monoclonal antibodies such as bevacizumab and ramucirumab, by its ending MAB, a monoclonal antibody. Uh, it's, uh, well, is that what that means? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, thanks for clarifying. That's what, it really helps you know, for, for the, the, the folks out there you know, when, I, when I talk to my non-oncology yeah. colleagues yeah. and uh, friends, it focuses yeah. the discussion. Yeah. So for anyone Googling monoclonal yeah. antibodies out there, this is uh, you know, for them, not for the experts. Yeah. It's nice <laughs> but, to be able to explain to people it's not magic. Right, yeah. Yeah. The, the but, um, or so, magic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you're looking at binding at the uh, receptor inhibiting the pathway outside of the cell. So uh, for MABs. Right, but also ligand binding. And yeah. the ligand yeah. yes. binding, which is uh, bevacizumab, which is VEGF A, it, it traps. So ligand mm -hmm. is a portion of, you know, is the excretory molecule that activates the receptor, and uh, it, you can uh, sort of trap the ligand in, uh, in the way that bevacizumab does. What tyrosine kinase inhibitors do, and as Joanna was mentioning it, there's a lot more off-target effects because they're sort of what we call dirty TKIs, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, so they can inhibit, in addition uh, to VEGF, other possibly important pathways such as uh, PDGF, platelet-derived growth factor, uh, placental-derived growth factor, you know, FGFR, and so on. Uh, and so, and then you get all the benefits, uh, potential benefits of these pathways because um, you know, they also play an important role in, in growth of sol solid tumor, but also the off-target effects, um, such as LFT abnormalities and so on. Just your, your opinion, with getting back to the antibodies, in terms of, you know, we have an antibody that targets the ligand, antibody that targets the receptor. Is one better than the other? Well, uh, it's, it, you know, it's interesting in science and medicine. A lot of uh, you know predictions can be made mm -hmm. about how which which antibody, which uh, receptor will be more important. But the truth is, clinical data in the end speaks yeah. of itself. Yeah. So we can over rationalize things, but a lot of the important discoveries are made actually in retrospect. You right. see the drug works, and then you go back and say try to identify why it works. Similarly right. to erlotinib and EGFR mutations. So. Uh, I would say, you know, if you asked me 
10 years ago, I would have not really been able to tell you if, which uh, way is a better way to target VEGF because it makes sense. Why not trap the ligand mm -hmm. and, and prevent it from activating the receptor? This way you get it before it even gets to the receptor yeah. and maybe it's a more complete and early um, uh, uh, you know, point to inhibit the pathway. But now the data, at least in gastric, suggests that there's something different about uh, targeting the receptor itself, the R uh, VEGF R2. And ultimately, the clinical data uh, is stronger for target, uh, targeting the actual receptor as opposed to the ligand. Right. So we know that although VEGF um, and its various isoforms are the major ligands, there are other proangiogenic sure. ligands mm -hmm. that can, can bind, which obviously BEV would not necessarily in, in, inhibit. So, yeah. So it's your, your, your point, it's, you know, kind of bench to bedside and then back Sometimes from bedside to bench. It has yeah, to yeah, cross yeah, it has, has to go. So, so let's talk a little.